Finally, we have another long one with Bastion. This is also the first time I've played this. My only experience with this is Chip Cheesem's Let's Play back in 2012, I think. It looked really interesting, but I didn't have a way to play it back then. I just found up seeing it on offer for like £1.79 on the Switch eShop and thought, yeah, I need one more game for episode 9, that could work. I begin story mode and choose normal difficulty, and then put straight into the first level, The Rippling Walls. Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as it points the way. He don't stop to wonder why. I walk forward a little and pick up my first weapon, the sail hammer. There are two things you notice right away in this game. The first is the narration, provided by Logan Cunningham. Not only does he give context to the world around you as you're playing, but he also describes some of the actions you're taking while playing and making them sound loads cooler than it actually looks. In the worst game this will get old fast, but he's so well written and his voice such a comforting presence that I can't imagine the game without it. The other is the level building itself up tile by tile as you move forward. All I can say about that is, it looks so good. The narrator at one point mentions that the empty streets and the destruction we see around us is a result of the Calamity. I also meet my first enemy, a gas fella. These lived underground until the Calamity forced them out. I kill him and get 30 XP. I hang about, smashing up everything I can for these blue fragments. The act is currently later on, so I want to get as much as I can. Once I've done that, I head up the stairs to find a second weapon, the Fang Repeater. It rapid fires arrows, but I can't move while firing. I start with 8 arrows for now, and when they run out, I have to wait for the bar to refill to reload. So much has happened so quick, I haven't had the chance to point out our protagonist. He's silent and only referred to as The Kid. His true name is never revealed. Up the stairs is a health fountain that I use to fill some health tonics that I can use later to heal. After this, a group of squirts, the weakest enemies in the game, rise up through the ground. They can only attack by nudging and each one takes a single hit to kill. Up to the left I find a collectible, a memento. This one is a crystal barrette, belonging to an old crush of the kid. I then enter the saloon. The narrator says this is one of Ceylondia's famous watering holes, Ceylondia being the city this is taking place in. It's here we see what the Calamity actually did to the people, as Ronnie the bartender has been reduced to ash, still formed in the position he died in. In here I find the bullhead shield, which can both block attacks and reflect them if I pull it out just as the attack is about to connect. This activates a security system, summoning a security turret. It fires three shots before stopping to reload, which gives me time to kill it. It rewards me with some tonics, but I already have the maximum three. Three gas fellas drop in crates. I manage to kill one of them before it breaks out. The squirts and gas fellas both belong to the same class of enemy, the windbags. After the gas fellas are more squirts, and a larger glowing gas fella. Once that's done, I scatter on these ashes and jump out a window. This drops me into the wharf district. I break open a crate containing the breaker's bow. This fires a single shot, stronger than the fang repeater, but it requires charging. I'm given some turrets to practice on. Letting go of the button just as the kid glows will cause a stronger power shot. It's easy to get the timing on. Off to the side I find another item, something stringy. The something items are different than the others, but more on that later. I go down the boardwalk taking out more turrets and find a tome titled Whirlwind. The tomes are special skills for certain weapons. Only one can be equipped at a time. This one's a spin attack. I have three uses, represented by the black tonics under my XP bar. They can be refilled by finding them throughout the levels. I take out more enemies to open this gate. Behind it is the distillery and the arsenal. The arsenal is where I choose which two weapons and one special technique I'm taking with me. The distillery is where I can equip spirits as certain bonuses. I have one spirit for every level I gain, so of course when I start, I can just have one. I go with Fetching Fizz, which draws in fragments from further away. When I move forward, I find corn bins that rapidly birth squirts. You get no XP from the squirts, but the corn bin gives 50 XP when destroyed. In the corner, I find the remains of the kid's tutor mod before moving through the next gate. I reach a ferry barge where I take out another big gas fella and press a switch to get it moving. I pass in by turrets here, so I take them out with the bow. When it reaches its destination, some squirts land and there's a pair of gas fellas hanging around. I take out the enemy crates and pick up something heavy. Then, in drops the final member of the windbag family, two scumbags. These throw out blue goopy stuff and charge forward leaving a trail of slime. A scumbag's health is indicated by its size, as it takes damage it shrinks. I'm also joined by an even larger gas fella and two corn bins spinning out squares. Even with the gas fella's attacks breaking away the floor, I still defeat him, gaining me enough XP to reach level 2. Once I take out the corn bins, the gate opens and I'm showered with fragments. Behind the gate is the core of the wharf district. The whole place starts collapsing, with fire dropping from the sky. The core was what was keeping it in the air. I now have to run through the falling path, ignoring the turrets, trying to take out the enemies quick. At the end, I find the skyway, letting me leave this place and finally reach the bastion.
Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. And so we've met the narrator. For now, he's just the stranger. I can discuss with him some of the things I've collected. The kid's sea crest has the power to lead him to the cars. It's what forms the ground underneath him as he moves on. He tells me to set the car I've already collected on the monument in the middle. When I show him the crystal barrette, he says that this is the bastion, but no one else has arrived, meaning they're all most likely dead. So I do as he says and place the car on the monument. It puts three foundations into the west side of the bastion and the skyway at the top. I can only use one of those right now to build either an arsenal or distillery. I go with an arsenal for now. Building it also unlocks the mirror shield skill, which I equip. It temporarily makes me counter block all attacks. The stranger also has a different line for every possible combination of two weapons. With my weapons chosen, I use a skyway which takes me to the map screen. I can choose the next level, but instead I'm going to the Breaker Barracks, which is a proving ground for the Breaker's bow. Every weapon has one of these. My challenge here is to break all the targets in as few shots as possible. In the back are three prizes depending on my performance. There are four diagonal rows of targets with one lone target at the bottom. I mess up right away by not getting a power shot on that lone one. That and not standing in the right position to aim through the entire row. I know I'm not getting the best prize this time, so I spend my first attempt working out the position it needed. In the end, I destroy them in 12 shots, only getting me the third prize, something stringy. The second attempt has me overthinking the strategy, and I just restart halfway through. Third try, I get in 10 shots for the second prize, something fancy. It's quite a while before I get it down to 5 shots and get the first prize. I won't tell you how many tries, it doesn't make me look good. The first prize is another skill, the break of volley. I get dropped off at the bastion and take the skyway again. This time I set off to the workman ward. I get dropped at an intersection with 4 paths. I first take the left route. While fighting squirts I find a new weapon, the war machete. I like this weapon a lot. The kid slashes really quick and by holding the bow it can be thrown. It can even do a power shot like the bow. I take out the large squirt and the carbine to find a skill, the squirt lure. When using it, it tames nearby squirts and they'll fight for me. No, you can't kill a squirt that loves you for the XP. I tried. I'm not proud of it, but I tried. After taking out the next lot of squirts and I return to the middle, I go down into the dump, scumbag alley. As you can guess, this section is mostly populated by scumbags. At the end, I run into Gershel, the oldest scumbag. Unlike last level, there's only one big one here, so he goes down easily. No car here, so I turn back and where the path starts, there's now something sharp. I take the right path and find the remains of Percy the Snitch. I get my head kicked in by this glowing gas fella, but I survive. When I deal with the others, I enter the forge. In here, I can upgrade my weapons using the something items and some fragments. Each weapon has three upgrades each with a choice of two power-ups. I use something sharp to upgrade the war machete and makes attacks deal damage over time. I also use something heavy to give the sail hammer 50% extra damage. On the path north now. This place is filled with security turrets and gas fellas. Another memento to find here is one of the gas fellas' ragged hoods. A little further is the car, but there's a cage around it. A huge group of gas fellas appear, led by their glowing red foreman. Thanks to my machete upgrade, they all die a lot quicker. Although I do get juggled by them a lot. The foreman is taken down last and the cage rises. I pick up the car and return to the skyway to leave. Back at the bastion, I give the stranger the ragged hood, which gets us our very own squirt as a pet. I place the car and build a forge. I use something stringy to upgrade the breaker's bow to have 25% faster draw speed. A bow and a machete, every bit as effective as the fancier stuff. Got two full elves to choose between next. I go with the sundown path first. I just start walking up the only path, but then the place starts crumbling. Somebody already got to the car first. I have to follow the trail of falling fragments while also dealing with the enemies, mostly gas fellas, but with turrets and the odd squirt. There's a new kind of turret too, these ones are flamethrowers. Things aren't too urgent though, I have the time to fight every enemy, search out the fragments and destroy objects or more. At the end I find a sky bridge. These launch me to the next platform. I cross a narrow bridge to find a bronze spyglass and take the next sky bridge. The next platforms are bigger and contain enemies to kill and I go through them. Then he's following another path with the corn bin firing squirts on the way. At the end is a massive scumbag taking up all the floor space. Turns out he's so big because he ate the car. I kill him, but the car is lost. I move on and pick up the hand grenade skill. What it does is obvious. It's good for taking out groups of enemies at a distance, obviously. Rather than use it on that massive gas fella crates, I just take them on with my machete. I use one of the sky bridges to find something burnt, and that's it, the skyway is right there. In all this toil, kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. 
Who else could have survived the calamity? After showing the stranger the spyglass, I swapped my weapons again. Ain't much kid can handle with hammer and bow in hand. I upgrade the bow again so that arrows cause damage over time. I also chat to the squirt to make it spin. It's cute. Clearing the sundown path unlocks Trapper Shingle, the proving ground for the Fang Repeater. For this one, there are targets to shoot while the floor breaks away behind me. It looks easy at first, but you also have to factor in your reload time. Eventually, that floor starts catching up to me and I have no choice but to leave a few targets towards the end. I clear it first time with 54 targets destroyed, gaining me second prize. I get something nasty and something greasy before trying again. It takes me a few tries to get it right. Part of it involves hanging at the end of the previous path long enough to get a few shots in on the targets of the next before setting the next paths collapse off. This lets me destroy all 64 targets and take the first prize, the snooze dart skill. Now for that other level, the melting pot. This place is overgrown with stab weeds, contact with them hurts. There's something nasty hidden behind some of them. I head down the stairs and find the core already, inside a cage. While smashing up everything I can, I get the trip mine skill. I plant one right away and then barely ever use it again. I smash everything up for the fragments and finally press the switch at the bottom to raise the cage. While it takes its time lifting up, I pick up the falling fragments and then the enemies start dropping in. I'm not alone though, there are some friendly squirts helping me out. Later on, I even get a couple gas fellas helping, grateful for me killing the foreman. During this, more stab weed and the shipment of tonics fall in, along with some ancient spices. After that, it's an onslaught of squirts and the glowing gas fella in the last 10 seconds before the core is free. During all this, all my allies die. The last one just as the core is free. I pick up the core and ride the barge that arrives back to the bastion. I place the core, let the stranger reminisce over the spices, and build the distillery. Since I'm level 2, I can equip another spirit. I choose wear whiskey, which gives me a 100% critical hit rate when below 33% health. I use something nasty to upgrade the frag repeater twice. First I go with 55% faster reload speed and 50% extra damage. You can swap between the two bonuses if you want whenever you're at the forge. Kids ready to slice them up and pound them with bits if they get in his way. Next I go to the proving ground for the war machete, Wainbag Ranch. The chance of this place is to kill all the enemies with just the machete as fast as possible. There's squares coming from both the ground and some corn bins and security turrets in the corners. My first try takes 2 minutes 5 seconds, getting me third prize which is something sharp. Second try I restart when I realise I'm about to end up with a similar time. A couple tries later, thanks to a particularly slippery squirt, I get 1 minute 28 seconds, getting me second prize which is something pointy. The winning strategy is to just hang in the middle for a while, swinging aimlessly to take most of the squirts out, then roll to the corn bins and deal with them, then finally the turrets by throwing a power shot. I get it in 44 seconds for first prize, the ghost blade skill. Before setting off, I upgrade the machete to make critical hits do double damage, I then take the skyway to the hanging gardens. The kid lands in two people's ashes. Going down the stairs, it seems to confirm that everybody was killed. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone away like Mr. Beckman, his kind of wife. It was someone like him. So I have to find a way to this gawping man. There's mainly just security turrets on the way. The Thunder Brothers didn't make it. Nor did the Bird Boy didn't make it. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Brady Senior, Brady Junior, they didn't make it. But him, he survived. I find an Ura Sigil here, apparently proof that this survivor isn't from Ceylondia. The stranger says that without him, we wouldn't be here right now, confirming that what I am playing is the stranger's recounting the events of the game to someone else. Presumably the kid, hence the Wii, but that would mean he's telling him things he was there for. I find the core, surrounded by the remains of many. Once the enemies are dead, I have no choice but to smash through them to reach the car. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. The kid brings a survivor back to the bastion, where he introduces himself as Zulf. He's an aura from a neighbouring country. The kid and the stranger introduce themselves to him and find it to each other. We never find out the kid's name, but whenever we're in the bastion now, the stranger is listed under his real name, Rooks. Showing him the Ura sigil has him tell us that Ceylondia fought the Ura decades ago, but things are different now. I can also show Zulf some of the items I've collected until now. He's been living in Ceylondia for a while now and worries about his home country. He mentions having also lost loved ones in the Calamity. He offers to help Rooks plot the Skyways. Finally, he was born in the Tazel Terminals and has been living in Ceylondia since he was sent there on a mission of peace. I place the core and get three new foundations on the east side of the Bastion. 
I can choose between a lost and found and a memorial. I go with the lost and found which is just a shop. I can't afford to buy much so I go with something heavy. The repeater and machete, favourite choices of the Ura hunters we once fought. Once again I have two choices for cars to hunt. I pick Cinder Brick Fort first. There's a few windbags to start with along with some turrets up the stairs. I end up burning through all my health tonics up here. I had a really bad habit of forgetting I can block and just relying on the dodge roll. Up the next set of stairs I find my next weapon, the scrap musket. It fires a powerful shot with a spread but it takes a couple seconds to reload after every shot. With the next part having corn bins, that spread is very useful. Destroying the last one before the next set of stairs gets me to level 3. There's an arsenal here so I swap my skill for the hand grenade. After the next gate I find the car. I have many windbags trying to stop my escape, aided by turrets later on and even some stab weed dropping from the sky after that. Through the next gate is a load of flamethrower turrets, but the hand grenade deals with them easy. I reach the fort's parade grounds where more enemies are dropping from the sky. This includes two big gas fellas named Glutus and Glandon, along with a pair of scumbags. It's a long fight, but I kill them in the end, then get showered with fragments. By the gate that opened, I pick up a marshal's badge. Through the gate and up the stairs, it's the skyway. Kid shows up just as Zolf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the Calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. Knocking myself out smoking puts me in who knows where. This is a long 20 wave enemy gauntlet, the waves being named Reflections. After each reflection, I'm awarded with a huge mass of fragments, and Rooks explains part of the kid's backstory, based on what he's heard the kid say in his sleep. Since there isn't much to say about fighting mobs, I'll just speed up the footage over my explanation of the kid's story. The kid never knew his dad, and he had to care for his frail mother, who he got his pure white hair from. For some reason, the hair got him bullied as a child, but he lived with it. He didn't do well in school, so instead he signed up to serve on the rippling walls to make his mum some money. Once his service was over, he returned home to find she had been dead for a while, and the money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found. Since there was nothing left for him in the city, he became the first person to do a second service at the Rippling Walls, where he was for the next five years until the Calamity hit. He earned the trust of the Marshals, who trusted him to scout farther than anybody. The Calamity happened during one of his expeditions. The last six reflections are explaining what we've played in the game already from his perspective. So yeah, quite a story. I'd like to say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing. What he's done, I surely would. During that, I got shitloads of fragments and 2400 XP. When I wake up, I talk to Zulf. When I show him the badge, he says that the marshals always treated him fairly. I ask about the smoking pipe, which was an antique from home. Despite what Zulf said about the marshals, Rook says that they always kept a wary eye on the aura. Since I'm now level 3, I can have the third spirit equipped. I choose the hearty punch, which gives me one extra life refill if my health runs out. I upgrade the sail hammer so that the uppercuts in its combo cause knockback. From the Lost and Found, I buy the final warning skill, something nasty, something sharp, something stringy, and something coarse. I then use my remaining money and something coarse to upgrade the scrap musket to have 35% more spread at the cost of 15% less firing range. Anything survives a musket shot ought to be quick work for that blade. I like getting all that money, so I go back into who knows where for another go. Once I'm done, I buy Grava Slash along with a couple spirits, Bastion Bourbon and Lunkhead Liqueur. Kids ready to get real personal with hammer and musket in hand. I finally place that car from the fort and build a memorial. In here I can get rewards for completing vigils, basically achievements. All I can get right now is the valediction, 250 fragments for building said memorial. Before moving on to look for the other car, I got the shield's proving ground, bullhead car. For this one I have to counter block the enemy attacks to defeat them all taking as few hits as possible. It goes a turret, two turrets, a gas fella, three turrets, two gas fellas, a rapid firing turret, a glowing gas fella, two rapid firing turrets, three squirts, one normal gas fella and one glowing, one turret and one rapid firing, and finally a scumbag. I take 15 hits over the course of that, getting me second prize. All prizes on this one are large fragments. Then I'm told first prize is to only take three hits or fewer. It takes me about 15 minutes more, but I improve my timing enough to get it down to just two hits the first prize. That last large fragment was worth two and a half grand. When I get back, I use that money to fully upgrade the breaker's bow to have 25% faster draw speed, and fully upgrade the fang repeater to have double ammo capacity. The war machete is also done. I go with attacks doing more damage over time, hoping to stack the two. I also buy the last two spirits left in the lost and found, whale ale and stab synth. Before looking for that other car, I also have Zolwood Grove, the proving ground for the scrap musket. This one requires me to destroy all the targets in as few shots as possible. I use my first two shots to try and bunch them all together, trap them in the corner and knocking the last of them off the edge. 
This is done in 15 shots, getting me first prize. My rewards are the Scrap Salvo skill, Something Foul and Something Coarse. I use the Something Coarse to give the Scrap Musket 15% more damage. Still not going for the next car, instead it's a Sail Hammer's Proving Ground, the Scrapyard. This one is simple, destroy 100 objects as fast as I can. Starting with a dodge roll before I swing also destroys a few things. I get it in 29 seconds for second prize. For this I get something heavy and something wrong. Second time I get it down to 23 seconds for first prize, the stunning wallop skill. Now it's time for Pith Orchard. This is where people used to come to pray to the god Pith. All those gates with the bullhead, they're in Pith's image. Rook says that the core is already gone. I go south to find a plush Pith and then head north. I reach a garden and smash through the fence to find something coarse. The next garden has a mechanical pith used as a scarecrow that comes to life and attacks me. They attack by charging and have high defence, but it wasn't a problem. Behind it is the shrine. Here I can invoke gods for various effects. The only one I have access to is pith, who makes enemies faster. But I don't bother for now. Now the other enemies start to appear. The usual until I make it back near the beginning to find another mechanical pith has come to life. This one manages to spew so much smoke at me so quick that I get my first death, though I still have two more chances. After that, it's just leaving. I show Zulf the plush piff when I get back. He's not fond of the guns being turned into toys, but we do get the metal ball decorations and the steam bolt. When I show it to Rooks, he says the Uru were more fearful of the gods in Ceylondia. I don't make any changes and head right out. Only available location right now is Langston River. The river itself has dried up and after taking out the windbags I end up on this ferry barge. Activate the switch and Weeping Nelly, as it's called, sets off. While it's moving, I get security skiffs with turrets showing up and some with gas fellas. However, later on it gets stuck in the wall. I head out on the boardwalk and get killed, and at the end of it, I find the car. On the way back to Weeping Nelly, I get swarmed by birds. These are peckers. The scrap musket deals with them quickly. When I get back, there's a pair of flamethrower turrets on my side. When I set off again, more peckers show up. Not just that, there are more security skiffs and gas fellas. Those turrets fire slow homing shots, and one of them kills me again. I lose my own turrets and Nelly starts breaking apart and speeding ahead, just managing to get me to the next area. There's even more peckers here and they're desperately trying to take that car from me. When they're gone, I enter this opening in the middle. This drops me into Prosper Bluff. Down here I have some helpful gas fellas fighting off peckers for me. There's a gate here, so I go off to the south to press a switch to open it. There's another right after it, so I do the same. On the way to this switch, we start to hear singing. And as I make it to the switch for the next gate, it gets clearer. Past the fourth gate, a large pecker kills me, but entering this area refilled my lives. This goes on for a while longer, fending off peckers while opening gates with switches. Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home at the end. And besides, it's like the song goes. Before too long. The singer is another Aura named Zia. Zolf is obviously thrilled to find that I never survived. There's only one car left too. Time to talk to Zia about some of the stuff I already have. I find out she was born in Ceylondia. She once tried to run away from home before the marshal stopped her. The journal I found just before I ran into her was a dad's, but it's written in the Aura language which she can't actually speak. Time to Joe Rook's the journal. If only I'd known half the secrets of the calamity were tucked away in that book. I had a work to translate it right away. A scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. Well, time to place the car. With it, I can build a shrine. I unlocked a new idol too, a Kirby. Nothing else to do but look for that last car, which has been tracked to the wild outskirts. This place has been mostly untouched by the calamity. Hidden inside the log where I start is a new weapon, the slinger pistols. Unlike my other projectile weapons, I can move while holding the button to keep firing. A new enemy is the pincushions that rapidly fire needles at me. I reach the car surrounded by peckers. Rook speculates they're trying to build their own bastion. I get killed by the tag team of Big Pecker and Pincushion. Having that happen so early is a bit of a pain, but I kill them and grab the car. I still have to get out though. A clearing opens so I can move on to the left. I get another new enemy, the Wallflowers. These can only be damaged when they open up to fire what I guess are spawns at me. The pincushion behind it gets me to level 4 when I kill it. There's an arsenal nearby and I put the pistols away and get back my musket. Near the arsenal, there's also a shipment of windbags. After I kill them, I find something greasy in the grass. After this point, the path curves and I'm now making my way south. 
Down here is another new enemy, big frog things called Lunkheads. The exact moment I kill it, a pincushion gets the final blow on me. Once it's out of the way, I return to the arsenal and get the pistols back. I pick up something foul and have two more wallflowers blocking the skyway. That should be everything, but you can see the progress bar on this video. After all, he's got the final core. His journey's over, right? Well, no, it ain't. Not by a long shot. Kid knows something's up when we ain't there to give a warm welcome. See, Zolf and I were just wrapping up a heated discussion. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says, but I will not. And with that, Zolf leaves us here, alone. Zulf cursed the city, cursed the bastion, cursed me, said he was going home. When Zulf got through reading that journal, he just snapped. Started smashing up the monument till I tried to stop him. Well, that sucks, but what happens with the core I've already got? Well, with the monument wrecked, I need to find its shards to put it back together and fix the bastion. But first, I have a new proving ground. A slinger range for the slinger pistols. For this one I have to shoot the targets as they appear as fast as I can, I get more points for how quickly I destroy it. You can see the points go up when the target appears and then plummet until it's gone. Don't miss, and hope you don't get stuck reloading in the middle or that score is ruined. That's what happened to me the first time. Didn't matter because I fell off the edge and had to start again. I still don't do very well and end with third prize at 81 points, which is something greasy. But then I find out that second prize is 500 points at least. Before trying again I return to the bastion and use something greasy to upgrade the pistols. I give it better accuracy and 25% extra damage, but no matter what I do, I can't even reach second prize. So I do another run through who knows where. During this I complete some vigils. The marshals for killing at least 10 enemies in one shot with the scrap musket, the menders for counter blocking with a shield at less than 20% health, and the gravers for hitting 15 machete swings in a row without missing. I claim my reward and use them to pay for bullets that go straight through the enemies. Neither upgrade was helpful for the proving ground. I also give the sail hammer 50% extra damage. So it's back to struggling to keep my points up. Until I remember that I have wear whiskey equipped. I roll off the edge until my health is low enough for it to activate. Now every shot is a critical that destroys the target in 3 shots. I finish with just under 800 points and get first prize. I get something stringy and the slinger psalm skill. I also completed the vigil of the dynasty for getting first prize on 7 proving grounds. Although I didn't notice I went straight out looking for the monument shard in Jaws and Bog. It's quiet when I first get here, no enemies or music, just Rooks explaining that collecting the shards can heal the Bastion. I find the shard, but then... Shame the only place to fill that prescription is out here in the wilds. This place is... intoxicating. Don't know where he's gone. Might be gone for good for all I know. Wherever he is. Somewhere I've never been. Somewhere I never want to go. Well, I've got these stink eye to deal with. Whenever I'm not looking towards them, they inch towards me until they touch me and burst. After that, Zia appears. Talking to her makes her scream and puts me in that circle of dead from earlier. Past that is a hallucination of Zolf, who sends me to an overgrown version of the Bastion. Here I complete the Mason's Vigil for dealing at least 70 damage with a single attack. I go to the Skyway at the top and it transitions me again. Kid sets foot inside one of Ceylandia's famous watering holes. Did the poor old Rondi, the bartender. Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. It's so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world's all right, snoozing there on a rock in the sky. He wakes up. I'm just fooling. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. He sees what's left of Pith, the bull. Gods, they're all undone. He sees what's left of his lifelong friend. His friend, he has come undone to. He sees what's left undone. This whole section is just really cool. It's probably one of the best ways of reusing old areas I've seen. I make a fire and go to sleep. This wakes the kid and I can pick up the shard. 
We're not done with this place yet though, still gotta find a way out. I meet the bootlickers who like to trap me in place, but they die quickly. Past the bootlicker is a huge plant, the lung blossom. It not only spits spores out at me, but bootlickers and pincushions are popping up around it too. Although vine apples grow here too, which heal a little when I destroy them. It's not that powerful though, and I bring it down, revealing the skyway. I place the shard in the monument. I now have the power to upgrade one of my facilities. First, I claim the rewards on my vigils. With all that money, I clear out the new Lost and Thoud items, the skill Dual Decider and the idols Javel and Henser. I choose to upgrade the forge so I can upgrade each weapon up to five times now. I upgrade the sail hammer for another 50% damage boost. I also upgrade the scrap musket so that damage from a far distance is reduced less. Put the bow and repeat at the ready. Kid aims to keep a safe distance. The next shard has been detected at Rothus Lagoon. A few steps from where I start is the skill Sneaky Decoy. Once I pick it up, I get surrounded by peckers. And after them, a lunkhead. When killing it, I complete the trapper's vigil for killing it with the last bolt in the clip. A bit later, a pecker descends only for an ankle gear to jump out and eat it. This particular one is called Queen Anne, and she leaves. A bit further on is my next weapon, the Brush's Pike. The pike does one slow, strong jab and can also be thrown like the machete. Queen Anne pops up again, but then leaves. I head north for something nasty before going back and taking the east path. I follow her through all the pincushions, wallflowers and lunkheads, getting killed by that last one. She'll try to attack me if I end up in the tall grass, and I can't hurt her just yet. During this there's also the stinkweed, another new enemy that just spews gas. One of them leaves behind something pointy when it dies. I also pick up an ankle gator egg at one point. Right after this I reach a lair, where I can actually fight her now. The shard is here too, and I take it. Queen Anne emerges from underneath you to attack before going back underground. You just have to dodge and attack her while she's out. She's quite easy to deal with alone. I don't get hit once until the pincushion starts showing up and she gets me while I'm dealing with one. After they appear, it's not long before she's dead. The skyway is by the entrance to this area. When I get back, we now have a mailbox. I give the ankle gator egg to Zia, who decides to raise the baby ankle gator. Rooks, on the other hand, thought Queen Anne was just a legend. I place a shard and upgrade the Lost and Found to have more stuff. I claim my 500 fragments for the vigil, then in the Lost and Found I buy the Pike Vault skill. Something pointy, something fancy, something greasy, something burnt, something foul, something wrong, bowl brandy, grab a gimlet, leech aid, and mend a mead. This empties it once again. I then use the last of my money to use something pointy to give the Pike 15% extra critical hit chance. You don't always care for fancy guns and things. A bow and pike will do just fine. I also remember that I'm level 4 so I can equip a new spirit. I choose Mendermead, which restores some health when pulling off a counter block. I now have access to Camp Dauncey, the Brushers Pike's proving ground. For this, I have to navigate a pincushion maze to activate 6 switches. First, I use one of my lives just running through the spikes of the first switch. Then I try to figure out which ones to kill to get through quickly. First time I don't do it so well and get the third prize in a minute 38 seconds, I get something pointy for this. Second time, I narrow it down to a minute 12 for second prize, something nasty. Five minutes later, it's down to 59 seconds the first prize, the Brush's Sweep skill. Once I return, I head straight out for Point Lemaine. After killing a few enemies, I find the Army Carbine. This gun works by holding down the button to focus the blast. Letting go just as the kid flashes does the power shot. As I start running on the Grand Rail tracks, they start shaking and the level becomes an auto-scroll for a bit. I deal with the usual plant-based enemies until I get to the end and the scrolling stops. I keep moving on, now with Lunkheads and Peckers in the mix too. I run into an arsenal on the way, I take the hidden path left for something sharp before getting my bow back and moving on right. According to Rooks, this place was where the war started between Ceylondia and the Ura, caused by them building the Grand Rail onto their territory without permission. The Ura lived underground in the Tazzle Terminals, so having a giant train track going above them probably wasn't too pleasant. I find the shard, putting me into another auto-scroller. A lot of swamp weeds here bursting and covering the screen. Same enemies, and during this I pick up something fancy, but then I reach the end. Turns out he's got company at the rail station, waiting for him. At first he thinks it's Zulf. Turns out he's wrong. This is for you, says the man. Then wham! When the kid comes to, the man's long gone, but something else is there. The only words kid recognizes on that parchment are for Zia. Well, what's a kid to do? He took the shard, he took the hit, and he took that note. I give Zia the note. He asks us to travel east to find out the truth about the calamity. Rook says that the messenger was another aura. How many survived is unclear. I place the shard and pass by Zia's stockpot to have it pointed out to me. I use the shard to upgrade the memorial to have more vigils. 
Two of them I can already claim. There's the inspiration for upgrading five weapons to the third level, and the city for spending a total of 10,000 fragments. I upgrade the pistols to have 25% extra damage, and the pike so that frost attacks cause knockback, and then once more so that stead attacks are 25% faster. I give it one more upgrade for 50% more damage. Finally, I use something fancy to make aiming 30% faster with the army carbine. Now it's time to check out the stockpot. This takes me back to who knows where, but this time we're being told Zia's story. Zia wasn't born in the Tesla terminals, but Ceylondia. Both of the parents were orphaned in the war and raised in the city, but they were forbidden from returning to the terminals. To prevent city secrets from leaking, any other refugees were there for life. Zia was raised purely by her dad after her mother died in childbirth. She never saw him much though because he spent most of his time working for the Mansers. Her dad never told her about the Mansers or even her Ura heritage, saying it was for her own good. She used her time at school to learn music. She couldn't fit in though because her classmates would spread rumours that her dad was a traitor selling out the city. One boy would stand up for her, and even knew a lot about the Ura, so she got close to him. He says he always wanted to meet someone from the terminals and convinced her to take him home to her dad. He greeted her dad in the Ura language, which pissed him right off and he threw them both out. What Zia's friend didn't tell her was that foreigners speaking the Ura's language is seen as a massive insult. Of course, Zia had no idea about any of this, so she decided to escape with the boy to the Tassel terminals. They'd hide in a rubbish bin, wait for a scumbag to eat it, and ride him out of the city. But when they got to the city walls, the authorities were already there waiting for them. It was a friend. He told them that Zia's dad was using her to sell secrets to the terminals. Zia and her father were arrested for treason. They made a deal so that if he worked for the Mansa some more, Zia would go free. But before he left her for the last time, he whispered to her to go home to the den and lock herself in. She did that, and underground she found his journal, the same one Zulfred before losing it. The next day, the calamity had happened around her. She had been kept safe being underground. And that leads to where she was when we found her. During that, I completed the brushes vigil for piercing an enemy with a pike thrust and then finished them with a the throw, and the breakers for killing three enemies with a single power shot from the bow. Back at the Bastion, I used that money I made to buy the breaching bullet skill. This completes the service vigil for gaining 20 secret skills. I claim my rewards. I upgrade the army carbine to have 35% extra damage and 35% faster reload time. I give the war mache double critical hit damage and the fang repeat a 50% extra damage. Now that's a lot of guns for just one kid, but he can hold his own. Next I go to Trigger Hill, the Army Carbine's Proving Ground. This one has me quickly destroying targets again. First it's just targets on the left, then turrets appear on the right. I get killed at one point getting surrounded by all the homing shots. I finish in 46 seconds, second prize. I get something fancy and something coarse. Now I just have to shave 12 seconds off. I manage to take off 11 the next time, leaving me a single second off first prize. Third time I bring it down further to 29 seconds, first prize, the Trigger Blitz skill. I want to get some more vigils done, so I go to the shrine and invoke Pith. This also gives me a slight money and XP bonus. I then return to the kids who knows where. I complete the slingers for emptying all 12 bullets from a pistol's clip into an enemy without missing. This is soon followed by the triggers for killing an enemy with the carbine at an extreme distance. And to clearing who knows where with an idol invoked, I complete the faith. I remove Pith and fully upgrade the fang repeater to have seeking arrows. I also upgrade the scrap musket to have 15% extra damage. Finally, I give the army carbine 35% extra damage. Can't decide between a hammer and a brusher's pike. Take both. With that, I go for the next shard in Colford Cauldron. The cauldron is a volcano. The plant life has adapted to live here and is even more aggressive. Not long in, I pick up the fire bellows. I just hold the button to spew fire until the bar runs out. I use it to burn away the dead plants and find something heavy. I get killed by a wallflower trying to burn it down. When I kill it back, I complete the Conscience Vigil by reaching level 5. I slowly inch down the path south, dealing with all the swamp weeds falling from the sky. On the way back, I pick up a Pecker Nest, completing the Culture Vigil for picking up 15 mementos. A little further down, in front of an arsenal, I find something pointy. The path turns left and starts going north. It leads to the Shard. This activates a massive stink eye that were behind me. I go back the way I came and get a shortcut to a sky bridge that drops me off where I peeked at the bellows. I then have to head towards the start point, fighting more stinkai, burning trees and getting surrounded by peckers. Then the skyway is waiting for me. I give Zia the nest, getting us a pet pecker. I claim the rewards for my vigils, I place the shard and upgrade the arsenal, which gives me the trapper snare skill. We could have a final cookout with that stuff. Too bad that's not the plan. I use something foul to upgrade the fire bellows. First, a 20% better fuel generation so the flames last longer and recharge quicker. Second, for an extra point of damage per flame, and finally, for another 20% increase to fuel generation. I also upgrade the Sail Hammer so that attacks ignore armor. Now I'm level 5, I go to the distillery and equip Bull Brandy for 15% damage resistance. Before going for the next shard, I choose Grady Incinerator, the Fire Bellows Proving Ground. 
For this one I have to fry as many peckers as I can in the time limit. I have 30 seconds and during it I complete the Cinder's Vigil for killing 20 enemies with one continuous attack without taking damage. I get first prize for killing 72. I get something foul, something sharp and the Ring of Fire skill. Back at the Bastion I get my 500 Fragment reward and upgrade the Bellows to have 25% more attack speed. Just a few more shards to go, starting with Mount Zand. It used to be a sacred place but now it's just overgrown. Finding the Lunkheads here is a little difficult since you can't see both yourself and it most of the time. Off to the right I find something greasy. Like earlier, the creatures of the wild are building their own attempt at a bastion. Eventually I am visible again. We have regular ankle gators as enemies now. Past some more plant enemies I get another weapon. The galleon mortar requires holding the button to make the crosshair travel further away before letting go to fire. In the arsenal nearby I swap the bellows for the hammer. And next to that I pick up a fine gramophone. As I keep going in, Rux's narration explains that the best thing that can be done for these creatures is to quickly put them down. The Bastion is everybody's gain, but that can't be explained to them as they attack the killing instinct. They've also been searching the cars and shards, but we can't both have them all. I take a sky bridge up and find the shard. The skyway is right there, but the wild throws out everything it has left to stop the kid leaving with the shard. You don't need to keep tangling with all those things. That's the way. He's done what's best for him, don't you worry. Don't you worry. We'll all be better off once the Bastion is complete. I give Rux the gramophone and we fix it so the Bastion has music again. I place the shard in the monument and upgrade the distillery, which adds some more spirits to my collection. I buy the skills Turret Surprise and Burning Carousel from the Lost and Found. Walk by a kid with a machete and a mortar, you just keep on walking. I use something burnt to give the mortar a 25% bigger blast radius and 15% higher critical hit chance. New weapon, new proving ground. This time I go into Boundless Bay. There's a load of squirts here and I have 5 shots to take out as many as I can. My first shot takes out 27 and completes the Skipper's Vigil for dealing more than 999 damage in one shot. In the end I take out 83 and get first prize consisting of something burnt, something heavy and the skill bomb barrage. I get my reward for the Skippers but I can't afford any more upgrades at the moment so it's off to Burstone Quarry. Burstone Quarry is where most of the resources to build Ceylondia came from. The Aura have tunnels under the quarry, which Rook speculates is why it wasn't hit as hard by the Calamity. We have a new enemy, the Rattletails, who kick up rocks towards me. There's a friendly gas fella here too, but I killed him. There are still some creatures of the wild hanging around too. There are switches that lower some of the rocks but raise others. They open the path forward while preventing me from going back, now that I need to. At an arsenal I swap the mortar for the bellows. I repeat that cycle, finding something stringy along the way until I make it to the other end where Sir Lunky, a giant lunkhead, is waiting for me. He ended up being incredibly easy. I stood still and just jumped over me while I flamed into death. Next to where he was stood at first is something coarse. Behind the gear that opens from his death, I find Zulf. It's him. I've come to warn you, he says. The Bastion is under siege. Let it fall. You should not go back. Kid hears him, but he ain't about to be deterred. If that's the way it is, he says, then I won't stop you. Because my countrymen will. True enough, when I return, the Bastion is under attack. There's an Ura warrior waiting for me with a spear. I kill him and completely mercy the Jill for defeating 15 different kinds of enemy. Zulf showed the aura of the way here and they've come for revenge. I have to find another way in as they've sealed off the front. Here I also complete the country vigil for having collected a total of 13,000 fragments. On my alternate path I find Zia's harp guitar. I reach a skyway that brings me to the monument where the pets are fighting off the aura themselves. They're quite helpful and do a good job keeping me from being completely swarmed, but you can't take them for granted because... That's just sad. It was right before they were all defeated too. Problem is, it didn't matter. Zolf's plan worked. We find each other as the dust settles. Then I tell him why the Ura came. To get us back. For the calamity. It was Ceylandia's master plan to wipe the Ura out. But part of that plan backfired. 
didn't it? If only Zolf knew the whole story. At this point, I'm stood still because I'm searching the internet to see if my squirt's death was scripted or avoidable. It was avoidable. I fucked up. I even quit to the main menu hoping to repeat the siege and save it, but no, the autosave kicked in. I show Rooks as he has harp. He assumes I took her to take her back to her rightful home. I place the shard, which heals some of the damage from the Aura's tunneling, but it's only a temporary measure. The Bastion needs that final shard. I upgrade the shrine, which grants access to two more idols and completes a sanctuary vigil for upgrading every building. I claim my rewards and buy two idols, Yudrig and Lemain from the Lost and Found. I fully upgrade the Sail Hammer for 75% more damage, fully upgrade the Breaker's Bow for knockback on the arrows, the War Machete is fully upgraded for 50% faster attack speed, and I give the Gallium Maw a 25% bigger blast radius. With that mortar and hammer, he's like a one man demolition squad. I am now going to Urzendra Gate in Ura territory. Day 1, morning. I head forward and get attacked by a couple Ura. One of them I knock off the edge and the other I beat down with the hammer. I move on and we skip to afternoon of day 2. There's not much to talk about gameplay wise, so I'll have Rooks fill in some details. At the heart of the calamity was a simple idea. Never wanted to go to war again. Wanted to pull it out. Good luck folks against that problem. Scientists, soldiers, spies, even me. We sought solutions far beyond the city. We traveled near as far as the gate's going right now. Most of our efforts didn't bear fruit. Then there was a breakthrough, but it didn't come from one of our people. I also get something fancy during this, by the way. It came from an era, a brilliant young scientist named Ven. Ven worked for the Mansers, the sharpest knives in the city's drawer. With his help, the Mansers devised a way to seal the Ura tunnel shut in a flash. Just like that, every last Ura living in the Tassel terminals will be gone. This discovery was never to be used, they said, except as a last resort. But Ven didn't like being manipulated. He had plans of his own. Something wrong, too. He sabotaged the Mansers' little science project, set it to blow up in their faces. Imagine how Van must have felt when they finally made him pull that trigger. But remember, the Bastion can fix everything. We just need that shard. Too bad the Ura ain't exactly been willing to collaborate on that front. For now, kid had little choice but to pick up where the calamity left off. I didn't say much about it, but this is a really cool level. Just listing the amount of days it had been really made it feel like the kid was slogging through enemy territory for days. And we only get a little teaser at the end for now, but I love the look of the Euro's territory. The shard will have to wait for now though, because the next goal is saving Zia. This leads to Zultan's Hollow. This is the outpost they attacked the Bastion from. Right away I find a delivery from Rooks. It's the final weapon, the Calamity Cannon. This can't lock on, only manually aim and it requires fully charging to fire a single shot. But it's a powerful shot that causes a large explosion. You can damage yourself from the explosions too. I head forward and fight my way through the aura and their security. The place is held together by these rocks with four conductors in them. You want to destroy them because taking out all four lets you some fragments. The aura planted some of these inside the bastion. I reach an arsenal and swap the mortar for the machete. Past the arsenal the aura have their own rattle tails that try to fight me off but the cannon destroys them. Fighting them gets me to level 6. There are these huge black jagged rocks that I just have to shoot a conductor to bring down and find something burnt. I head north and find most of the conductors bunched together, which makes it easier for me to wreck them. During this there are these two plants spewing stink eye all over. It takes a bit but I destroy it all in the end. To the southeast is something foul and to the north I get more aura coming at me. I take out more conductors to open the path forward to fight more aura and stink eye, then fire over a gap to a conductor to open the way forward again. At one point they do overwhelm me by piling on the lasers and soldiers with guns. Around here I find something wrong and keep moving north. I destroy the last conductors keeping me out of the tassel terminals and fire a child's drawing off to the side. All those dreams snuffed out in the calamity. We'll bring them back. Way out there on the edge of the world. That's where it finally finds you. But it ain't like Prosper Bluff this time. Ain't nothing for this gal to sing about now. Zia, you weren't kidnapped. No, ma'am. You just had to see what happened to the Ura. To your own people. You had to see if everything Zolf wrote to you was true. 
Sure you didn't drop that twangy thing on purpose? Just to see if he go after you. I don't need to see what happened to the Ura. I'm trying to undo it, remember? The power of the Calamity ain't well understood, but a hammer sure is. I used the something wrongs I picked up to upgrade the Calamity Cannon. First, so that rockets cause knockback, second, so that it charges 25% faster. From the lost and found, I buy the skill Mansa Missile. I'm level 6, so I go to the distillery and equip Lifeline, which lets me survive an otherwise fatal attack. Before the terminals, I have the Calamity Cannon's proving ground, Mansa Observatory. For this one, I have to defend the conductors from 75 windbags. It's trickier than you think having to manually aim. I end up taking out conductors myself, killing enemies that got too close. In fact, first time I end up destroying them all. Second time too. And third. The next time I kill them all, but with only one conductor standing, this just gets me third prize, something wrong. I return to the Bastion and have Rooks point out the kid's bedroll. I don't have the money to upgrade the cannon further, so I check it out. Zolf. Very soon the kid's gonna have to face that man again. For the last time. As you can guess, this who knows where gives us Zolf's story. When we found Zolf in the Hanging Gardens, he was prepared to commit suicide. His parents died from a plague when he was young. Since he grew up poor and hungry, he started stealing from a Ceylandia missionary living in the Tazzle Terminals. He was eventually caught, but the missionary decided to take him in. The missionary raised him as his own son. When he died, Zolf continued the missionary's work to try and bring lasting peace between the Aura and Ceylandia. He'd teach what he learned to any Aura that would listen to him. He preached tolerance and thought that the Aura should atone for the war, and the city could teach them a lot. But he couldn't get it all done in the terminals, so he moved to Ceylandia to show that the Aura had changed. He loved the city and the people there were fond of him. He even got engaged to a Ceylandian woman, proposing to her in the Hanging Gardens. He lived under an Aura Ceylandian war memorial, built like an Aura den. But of course, he emerged from his home the morning after his engagement party, and the calamity had happened. He went to his fiancée's home and when he reached out to her, like everyone else, the ashes in the shape of her body crumbled and blew away. He returned to the Hanging Gardens to end it all and that's where the kid found him. So justifiable enough reason to be pissed I'd say. At one point during those proving ground attempts, I completed the Mansa's vigil for killing three enemies from a single Calamity Cannon Blast. That's all the vigils completed. I used the fragments I gained to give the cannon a 35% faster reload speed. The faster reload makes missing less painful, but it still takes a few tries until I kill them all without losing a single conductor. This gets me first prize on all proving grounds. I get something burnt and the Calamity Rocket skill, the final skill. Time for the final level, the Tazzle Terminals. The Calamity tore it from underground and lifted it into the sky. We've now caught up to Rooks' narration. Rather than recalling, he's speculating as to what the kid's doing right now, quite accurately. This place is in a bad state thanks to the Calamity. All of Zulf's old friends were killed in it too. We now have Ura wielding crossbows to deal with too. Some of them even fire poison bolts. Look around. There's not much left to do here in the Bastion, I'm afraid. So why not tell each other stories to pass the time, right? But Zia, there's another reason I've been telling you all this. So yeah, Rooks was narrating the entire game to Zia. It's one of those things I didn't really think about the first time watching this game, but it just makes sense looking back. Ceylandia will be whole again. Everyone will be alright. Everything will be back to normal. The problem is... We'll all be gone. But we're not gonna die. It's more like... All of this... Will just... Stop. Things will go back to the way they used to be. This whole place... Is a living record of the times before the calamity. The way things were before this story. I pick up hopscotch that turns my dodge roll into a jump so I can get between the platforms. You'd be your old self again. All those times that didn't go away. This place is just crumbling now. All your life's little setbacks. Imagine if you could have another go at them. No mistakes. Anyone you've ever heard of everything you've ever done. You can do it over. And wouldn't that be grand? Wouldn't you agree? Well... I guess there's nothing more to say. I land on the platform with a particularly strong aura dropping down trying to get rid of me. When this one is killed, I get a thousand XP. I then jump across these even smaller platforms. There's something else. A confession. How come I know so much about the Bastion? Well, I designed the place, but that's beside the point. 
There's one problem with a place that sets things back to a bygone time. You can't test it. So you're probably wondering if the calamity happened already. What's to stop it from happening again after the Bastion does its thing? The answer is... I don't know. You're wondering if there ain't some other way out of this mess. It's all right. I can tell. But why would you even want another way? Unless... Unless you wanted to stay here... with us. This area just has me opening gates by pressing switches until I find this battering ram. Bastion does have another function, strictly speaking. If ever the monument blew out and we couldn't repair it, we could still evacuate. First, we'd round up as many folks as we could carry. Next, we'd detonate the cores and we'd take off away from here. As you can see, based on what I've just done, the battering ram is slow but absurdly powerful. It's a nice, fun and overpowered weapon to have for the last level. Every enemy dies in one hit. I then ride off to the next screen. They're waiting for me when I land, but the battering ram destroys them. Seeing that doesn't deter the others and they just keep coming at me, only to get killed. I find the final shard again, held by the one who took it last time. He keeps running with it and sending others to die for him. At one point they do manage to bring me down. He still doesn't stop me though and eventually he has no choice but to fight me off himself. He's stronger than the others, taking 9 hits with the ram to kill, but now the final shard is mine. However, the aura unhappy that Zul's revenge led the kid here and got so many of them killed. I could give up the battering ram and save him, but he got my squirt killed, so fuck him. Kid saves off once, but I don't think he'd make the same mistake. I wouldn't. Now, every remaining aura is trying to keep me from leaving, even as the terminals fall apart around them. Although, what else can they do at this point? They all die fighting me and I reach the skyway. Hey, kid. Get up, kid. Come on, that ain't funny. I say get up. That's more like it. Now, set that shard into the monument there. Then we'll talk. The Bastion. It's finally finished. Now, there's something I want you to see. Welcome to the heart of the Bastion. I ain't one for long goodbyes, so here's the deal. Zia and I figure you have done the heavy lifting, so you get to do the honors. We can tell you how to work this thing if you got any questions. Hey, kid. You can undo the calamity here and now. Go on, kid. And before I forget, thank you. Don't let anything you've done get to you. You can save all those creatures here and now. We made it. So, let's see. You can either prevent the calamity, or stick around with me and Rex. I'd hate to be in your shoes. If I could be any place I wanted, I'd stay right here. We could go anywhere in the world. Zulf tried to talk me into joining him. I tried to talk him out of it. I guess we both failed. When I finally found my people, I told them we could help. They just took me for a traitor. Glad you showed up. Any moment I'd want to live again happened after the calamity, not before. Well, restoration and risk everything happening again, or evacuation and try to rebuild in a new world. I want my squirt back. It's finished. Now nah, sit tight. It'll be over soon. No matter what happens next, you're done good. 
I suppose all that's left is to try and remember this moment. The Bastion's gonna take us back to a better time before any of this. other though after all we've been through I find that hard to believe so long kid maybe I'll see it in the next one say Landia we're coming home of the credits we get to see glimpses of life before the calamity we see Zulf and his fiancée, Zia hiding in the den, and the kid at work on the walls along with Rooks working on the Bastion. Of course, I'm not done yet. I didn't reach the maximum level, there were two idols I hadn't obtained, and most of the weapons still need to be fully upgraded. And I can get it done in the newly unlocked New Game Plus. I'll keep all my weapons, experience, idols, spirits, and can build all the Bastion structures in any order I want. Well, let's get started. One thing was added at the beginning in New Game Plus. I'll see you in the next one. That implies that New Game Plus is a direct result of the restoration ending, and the Calamity will in fact happen every time. Thanks to all my weapon upgrades I plow through the game again. Those last two idols are unlocked automatically on New Game Plus, I actually put some on to level faster. I fully upgrade all my weapons after finishing Rofus Lagoon again. Fully upgrading structures again gives you a huge fragment bonus too. I reach the final level, level 10, after killing Solunky again. And this time I fight off the aura while keeping all pets alive. There was also the DLC Who Knows Where, The Stranger's Dream. This is a Who Knows Where based around Rooks, sort of. We don't actually learn anything about Rooks other than the books used to enter this Who Knows Where he's had since he was young. There are 30 reflections in this one and the majority of it is him going through the alphabet with each layer representing something in the game. I'm torn on this. There's a part of me that likes learning more about characters so finding out more about Rooks would have been nice, but on the other hand I feel that it's bad that we don't know too much about him. We get a couple hints through some of the flavour narration and I think that's good enough. May as well bring up the other things too. There is one exclusive pet to the Steam version, a portal turret. There's also the achievements, which being on the Switch, I don't have to get. I would prefer to play the versions of the game with the most content, but the pet is so minor I can look past it, also I didn't know about it until I was doing the new game plus. Steam slash Xbox achievements, along with PS4 trophies, don't concern me much. I'll get them if I do a game on those systems, but it won't make me play those versions over other consoles. Also, any slightly old game with online multiplayer I may be screwed on anyway when it comes to online achievements. And with that done, all that's left is the other outcome. Without the blood of my squirt on his hands, I can take pity on Zulf. I drop the battering ram and carry him. I slowly take him towards the skyway, with all the aura showering the kid with arrows. But eventually, they just stop after seeing the kid not fall. One gets a little overzealous and is shot down himself. In the end, they just let them leave. Zulf is left near the monument, and this time, without the desire to bring anyone back, I go with Zia and choose evacuation. Oh, mother. And here I figured you'd had enough of me by now. You could have undone the calamity itself. But instead, you want to stay in a world like this. I gotta admit, kid, I ain't yet put much thought in that idea. But carrying on with you here, we can't go back no more. But I suppose we could go wherever we please. And if anyone's left out there, I sure would like to see the look in their faces when we dock this thing right on that doorstep. Getting ahead of myself, though. I'm gonna need a first mate. What do you say? Now there's a more uplifting ending and during the credits we get to see glimpses of everyone's lives on the travelling Bastion. Bastion is a great game. It was the first indie game that really caught my eye. The presentation is amazing, the look of it, the brilliant soundtrack, and it also helps that it's really fun to play. Every single one of those weapons managed to feel satisfying to use, which isn't something I see often. 
I really enjoyed the story too. That narration elevated it so much, it's why I left so much of it in. If you're into lore, there's so much of that too, but I just couldn't fit it all in this video. My only complaint, it really took me 7 years after discovering it through Chip Deasons Let's Play to actually play it myself.